take this conversation to the trifecta zone, Jerem, and bring in a third member. Blaine Fowler joins us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline via Zoom. Blaine, uh, I just brought up the idea that BYU might not be be giving the uh, additional favor because they're an independent. Do you, do you buy into that as to why BYU is number 13 and still on the outside when it comes to the New Year's six bowl games? Yeah, I, I don't know what the internal narrative is there, but, but Barta needs to stop trying to defend it and just say, we don't like him because, because every time he tries <laughs> to defend it, he just looks, it looks more petty and it looks more uninformed and, and, he, he throws out things like strength of schedule or and then they turn around and, and use the exact opposite logic when he defends Ohio State. And so, um, yeah, it's it's inexplicable. So rather than try to explain it and make yourself look even more ridiculous, because I, I can't find and maybe you guys can a single national person that covers college football for a living. They, that's what they get paid to do every day, unlike the people on this committee that would think that where BYU is ranked right now is accurate. Not a single one. Even Reese Davis on the on the Reveal show with, with Barta said, hey, I'm not going to be disingenuous. Like I, I think and everybody in here thinks they should be rated higher. So, so for him to try to defend it, he shouldn't even do that. It makes him look more stupid. It's, it's indefensible where they are. And I don't know whether it's, Hey, wait a minute here. You got Cincinnati in here. Uh, the G5s have an auto automatic bid. Um, if we put a, an independent like BYU in this thing, it takes away an at-large bid from a P5 school. We need to keep the money internally. I don't know what it is um, that's going on in that room, but it certainly is not based on merit. It's certainly not based on who's good in football. Yeah, and I'm not in the conversation where it's like, okay, they're out to get BYU. I don't, I don't think they're out to get BYU. I, I do think there's power five bias. And I, yeah, you can't argue that, well, it's not Ohio State's fault that they have played fewer games and da da da. It's like, you know who's played nine games and won all of them? BYU. Like, why isn't BYU? At, and we're not asking for BYU to be in the playoff. We're just asking BYU to be for BYU to be in the top ten. And so we were just talking about this, Blaine. We think that by attrition, that BYU in three weeks on December twentieth, they are going to be sitting in the top eleven, and that that's probably good enough because we saw BYU move up a spot despite not playing, and that's a good sign. No, I would agree with you. I, I think that rather than have a knee jerk reaction, I, I think that that committee probably sat there and went, "Whoa." We took a lot of backlash over this thing, and maybe that's enough to not have them slide down and have them leapfrog teams as long as BYU, you know, wins. Um, and if teams lose in front, uh, then, then there's a chance that they inch up. And so, so they didn't want to make a big correction and admit, yeah, we, we actually went and looked at film. And so you're right, they belong in the top 10. <laughs> but I think, the fa I think the fact that they moved up one was a little bit of a, a realization that maybe we can creep them up over the next several weeks and and people yeah and i'm with you guys i'm i'm not saying byu should be five or six i'm saying they should be 10 you know and yep. and you shouldn't have two lost teams in front of them and I, I have unbelievable respect for georgia but i think byu would beat georgia um georgia's losses are not good i mean they they weren't close in those games and their wins aren't that impressive and so it's like what's a two lost georgia team doing up that high um, and, and I don't think Iowa State should be, you know, should have been up there, or Indiana should have been up where they were. You know, and what, but but your point is that some of these teams in front of them are going to lose, and I think that BYU's had enough support out there that they're going to have a hard time passing the red face test without inching them up a couple of spots. And if I and if they're eleven or higher, come uh, when they when the bulls start to go out, I think then that they have a realistic shot of getting into New Year's Six. National champion Blaine Fowler with us on BYU Sports Nation, dual threat analyst. To your point, Blaine, BYU is now looking up at three different two-loss teams in front of them. Number 11, Oklahoma. Number 9, Iowa State. Number 8, Georgia. My question is, if BYU had lost two games against one of those schedules, against the schedule that any of those three teams had played, would BYU be in the top 11 in the college football playoff rankings? That's, that's hard to say because th then, then I'd be saying there's absolute bias against – because I don't know what's going on in that room. I, I don't know of any other explanation, though, Spencer, 
So my thing is, as an outsider, if they played that same schedule with with one loss, they likely wouldn't be where Georgia is um, or get the benefit of the doubt. As, as it's obvious they're not getting the benefit of the doubt right now. Right? I mean, isn't that obvious to everybody, including everybody at ESPN that does this for a living? I'll tell you the one that really was uh, Urban Meyer. BYU fans would be like, oh, we don't like Urban Meyer. But but Urban Meyer, Meyer I have a ton of respect for. As I've watched him in his broadcasting career, he doesn't pull punches. He just tells it like it is. And, and he's one of the best coaches in the history of the game. And he came right out and defended the team that he used to call the team down south and said, listen, I went back and I looked at film of these guys, a lot of film. And my conclusion from that is this is a team that can compete with anybody and they should be in the top 10. To me, that's the, that's the guy I trust the most of anybody that's, that's, that's talked through this because he has no agenda. And, uh, and so BYU for some reason outside of the eye test and how they've played, is not where they should be. So that's a long answer, Spencer, to your question, but probably not any higher than they are and maybe not even ranked in the top 14 with one loss um, based on what we're seeing. Yeah, it's really interesting, right? Uh, because let's say Ohio State played the schedule that BYU played. They probably would have had similar numbers, similar margins, similar yardage, defensively, offensively, and they'd be number three. scoring, <laughs> scored a lot, and they'd be number three, right? So yep. it's not BYU's fault, and, and BYU won all the games, and Boy State hopefully is good the rest of the year and, and looks at least decent and blah, blah, blah. It feels like the committee is taking more of the men's basketball committee approach, which is, well, it depends who you played and where you played them, but there's a third of the games, and BYU didn't have that opportunity to play its regular schedule. It's like people forgot what BYU has been doing in terms of strength of schedule, and that they had six power fives on the original schedule. If you're not backing down from people, I mean, it's it's just silly. Hey, and, and are people do people forget that BYU basically had a deal in principle with Alabama to open the season after COVID hit, and that the SEC right. said no, that Alabama and BYU were like, let's go, let's do this, right? You talk BYU, you think BYU's afraid? Hey, bring on Alabama. Now I don't know if they're gonna beat Alabama. <laughs> that's now, that's a whole different level, right? Um, that, that you know, there's there's about four teams in the country that I'm going. Oh, that's a tough matchup. Outside of those four, I like BYU's chances against anybody. But outside those four, I don't like anybody's chances other than those four against. And I think we all know who I'm talking about, right? I'm, ta I'm talking about Alabama. I'm talking about Clemson with a healthy Trevor Lawrence, right? I'm talking about Notre Dame. And actually, I think we match up pretty good. BYU would match up pretty good with Notre Dame, honestly, because they're a big physical team. And I think that's a good matchup for BYU. And then Ohio State, I think even though they haven't played very many games, you, you look at them, they're unbelievably skilled and talented. Outside of those four teams, um, I, I might take BYU against any other team in the top 10. I'd take BYU against Texas A&M or Georgia or, or Florida or any of those. Florida would be a really fun game. But, but BYU's willing to play Alabama. I know that Tom Homo has sent out inquiries every single week to try to get, including for this week, multiple literal proposals why don't we do this and this and this only to hear no 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 he's tried to get games every single solitary week he's still you know they're still on, in a holding pattern for a game this week he, he's he's got some irons in the fire for the week after the san diego state game so this isn't byu walking away from anybody this is everybody else going now nah, we saw how you guys are playing we really don't need that right now Blame we either either we're in a good position right where we're at or hey we're already not playing well this year there's no reason for us to get smacked by 50 that doesn't do us any good let's talk about the schedule a little bit more what's the drop dead date this week for BYU to schedule a game because I see out in the Pac-12 COVID issues between USC Washington State who knows what Arizona State's going to do they're supposed to play UCLA so maybe there's something out west in the Pac-12 or maybe a Mountain West team what's the drop dead date for BYU this week I I think Kalani and those guys would be willing to play if they told them tomorrow morning that they that you know and they've their attitude's always been let's play their attitude's been let's play with Washington and then on the it was at the administrative level that that Washington's demands were just so ridiculous that BYU couldn't agree to it. Um, and then, then we realized after the fact that that was never going to happen anyhow. Right. So that's why their demands were so ridiculous. But, but I do think the USC UCLA thing is kind of interesting because even if both of those games ended up canceling because of COVID um, UCLA and USC, there wouldn't be a need for them to play this week because they're already playing in two weeks. Right. So, 
So all of a sudden, e either one of those or both of those cancel, the Pac-12 is likely looking for a game. And I know that BYU would be willing, and I know that that uh, um, you know things have been discussed. Um, you would you would like to think that they could make that kind of decision by today, but I I think. Kalani would say tomorrow morning, let's go. And the one that's interesting to me is this this Washington State situation is similar to what Arizona State situation was a couple of weeks ago with Utah. They, they were coming off a game that they missed. They were still under COVID protocols. They said, hey, let's give them a little bit of a buffer. Let's move the game to Sunday and see if that works. And then, on, then by Wednesday, they were going, no, nah, it's not going to work. The game's off. And then Utah played Washington. And so that Washington State game, remember, they missed the one game already. They're, they have guys that should be coming off protocol. If they have additional that are going in, they already moved the game to Sunday. Um, you know, that that's the one that you could see possibly happening. But but I know that the Pac-12 desperately wants these teams to play, you know, to keep the keep the revenue in house. So if they can play, they will. BYU's willing, but but the odds are they end up without a game this week. They've been doing a week this week, like a game prep week. Um and uh, and they're going to be ready for San Diego State. And then I do think they have a really good opportunity the following week because multiple teams and multiple conferences have availability. I know Tom's been working on some things to try to get them a game. Kalani wants a game the week after San Diego State game. So I think they're more likely to have a game that week. That's good to know because there's a lot of conference championship games and the teams that aren't in them are more available, right? So perhaps that's the week. Right. Let's finish with hoops, Blaine. Uh, BYU loses by 26 to USC, one of the poorest performances we've seen from BYU in a while, right? Um, was that an outlier, or is that an indicator of something greater? Honestly, I think at this point in the season, it's an outlier. When I look at the raw talent and the ability to shoot on this team, it's there. Um, but, but what I was wondering is playing a team, USC's really long and can defend, so they're going to contest every shot. This is a team that were and there's no no fault of Mark Pope's he just doesn't even know what lineups are the best lineups out there yet typically you've got 10 games against teams that you can just manhandle and figure things out with and that you play three games you're still playing 11 12 guys a game and now you go and get USC and they're contesting every shot what I saw the other night or yet last night was a group of guys going is this where I'm supposed to take my shot or is this not my shot I'm not quite sure and so I saw hesitation in shooting, and that resulted in a 27.5% shooting night, right? And a horrific 23% from three. Difference between that and last year for BYU, hey, he's on a run. Who, who's our shot maker? You know what? We're going to put the ball in TJ's hands. He's going to take the ball off the dribble. He's either going to get to the rim or he's going to kick it to Jake. And then Jake's going to take that shot, and he's going to make that shot. And if he's going to be covered, then they'll reverse the ball. And on the backside, Connor routes, that's their shot. Everybody knew exactly where their shots came and what their role was in this offense. And so they shot the ball with confidence and they knocked them down at a really high rate. When you're not quite sure where you're supposed to shoot it, and it's not because Mark Pope's not telling him, just go ahead and shoot it. You got to be confident that your teammates want you to take that shot at that point in the game. And BYU's going to take a few games to get to that point. So I think this is an outlier. I think chemistry will come because these guys like each other. But to expect that they have the kind of understanding of who takes what shot, like BYU did at the end of, at the, end of the season last year, it's going to be a while before they get to that point. Blaine, great stuff. Uh, always nice to talk with you. And just so you know, you're number one in our broadcast playoff rankings. Oh, hey, is this, so is, is that my seating? Or <laughs> is this a tournament? Or is that just what I'm ranked? Dennis Pitta is the BYU of this. <laughs> <laughs> Bl Blaine is our Ohio State it. and Clemson. Yes, Blaine, great to talk to you, man. Thanks I so much. It. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Blaine Fowler on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.